Gerard, really great to have you today. I'm excited about this subject because we're going to get a little bit deep and nerdy. Semantic search. What is it, my friend? Yeah, great question. Thanks for having me, Chad. Yeah. Uh, semantic search. Yes. Uh, semantic search is a way of getting information um, to your end users. And uh, what we often hear in the field, where are you Where are you using semantic search? Are you using semantic search? The answer is we are using it. Uh, uh -huh. We're using it in uh, Now Assist. And uh, it's a, a way to allow for fuzzier matching and getting information uh, to end users. This, this might be a great parlay to the second question. So question how does it work two. and maybe why does it matter? Yeah, here it is, um, how it works. This is where we get nerdy. This is where like we it. start talking numbers. Like it. Let's so, do it. so basically the way that it works is we have something called a semantic encoder. Uh, these semantic encoders basically take words, uh, in this case in English, mm -hmm. and translate them into numbers. Um, people often call the things that store semantic vector databases because you're basically building out a vector for your content or your search query. We're basically doing matching on the the question that's being asked and the content that we have, and we're trying to figure out how similar they are. Uh, why it matters is because we have a lot of customers that ask uh, questions that are very similar in meaning mm -hmm. um, to specific types of information, but do not exactly match from a keyword perspective. So when you think of, can I get access to uh, Outlook or can I, request access to Outlook. Like you need to understand that get and request are very similar in meaning and provide that as a response. Um, there are some gaps uh, okay. in that, but we can talk about that a little bit later. All right, that, all right, so I appreciate that. So with that, in your experience, because you, you, you've been doing this a lot with customers in, in the field, what Question does success three. look like for our customers? Yeah, in, in this case, this this idea of having uh, semantically similar content, success looks like uh, our end customers not needing to perform a lot of heavy lift on editing their knowledge base articles or their catalog items and really having uh, a more natural experience with the content without needing to do a lot of tuning uh, and tweaking. So uh, what we've seen in the field is that when we've offered these semantic capabilities as part of Now Assist, mm -hmm. there is an uplift of roughly 5% on our recall scale, which doesn't sound like a lot, I know, but it actually is when you consider, you know, the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of requests that customers get per day. 5%, to your point, 5% doesn't sound like a lot, but this it ends up increasing exponentially. So I got a final question, question for you. You mentioned oh. gaps. So what is on the roadmap for this? Yeah, the, the biggest the biggest issue you can say with semantic technology is that uh, we're using an encoder, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And there are some words that the encoder just doesn't know. Um, so it just makes up a number <laughs> um, right. for that for that term. So you may have, and it does the same thing for acronyms too. So okay. you may have business specific terms or acronyms are using um, and we're basically going to match or have strange matches on those. Mm -hmm. um, so in the roadmap, we're combining our sort of legacy keyword approach, which includes a lot of the synonyms and business specific terms or even company specific terms that can be configured by customers and combining that with semantic technology. So what end users will end up getting is the best of both worlds and a unified sort of representation of what that looks like. That is awesome. We only have four minutes and four questions. I know you wanted to get a little bit deeper. I, we have an opportunity. If there's any questions, concerns, want to get a little bit deeper, please reach out to Gerard and myself in community. You will see the URL at the end of this. And with that, Gerard, I want to thank you for spending your time with me. This was awesome. All right. Thanks, Chad.